To understand fundamental price multiples, consider the Gordon Growth Valuation Model. If we divide both sides of the equation by next year's projected earnings, E1, we get this equation. On the right side, we have the forward dividend divided by forward earnings in the numerator. This is the expected dividend payout ratio for the next period. As we've learnt from Gordon Growth Model, R is the required rate of return on the stock and G is the expected constant growth rate of dividends. On the left side, we have the current price of the stock divided by the forward earnings. We call this the forward or leading P-E ratio for the stock. This is because it's based on expected earnings next period, not on actual earnings for the previous period, which would produce a lagging or trailing P-E ratio. This P-E that we calculate here is also referred to as a justified P-E. It's justified because assuming we have the correct inputs for the right-hand side, the P-E ratio will be based on the present value of the future cash flows. For example, if ABC stock has an expected dividend payout ratio of 45%, a required rate of return of 12%, and an expected dividend growth rate of 7%, the firm's justified P-E ratio will be 9 times. The justified P-E ratio serves as a benchmark for the price at which the stock should trade. If the firm's forward P-E based on the stock's market price is higher than the justified P-E, the stock would be considered overvalued. Conversely, if the P-E ratio is lower, the stock would be considered undervalued. Let's work on an example. Macrosoft's stock price is currently $60 and has just paid a dividend of $2. Macrosoft's dividend is expected to have a constant growth of 3% indefinitely. The trailing EPS of the stock is $5 and is expected to grow by 6% next year. Calculate Macrosoft's justified P-E ratio and determine if the stock is currently overvalued or undervalued. Required return for the stock is 6.5%. If you're up to the challenge, do pause the video and attempt to solve this. And we're back. Let's first note down the data we're given. Current price is $60. Current dividend is $2. Current earnings per share is $5. Required return is 6.5%. And the constant growth rate is 3%. Our first step is to estimate the following year's dividend. Using the constant growth rate of 3%, we get $2.06. Next, we estimate the forward earnings. We're told it is expected to grow by 6%. The forward earnings is therefore $5.30. The justified PE can be calculated using this formula that we've just learnt. Plug in the appropriate figures and we get 11.11 .11 times. The market P.E. is the current stock price against the forward earnings. Note that we should be using forward earnings here and not past earnings. Plug in the figures and we get 11.32 times. Since market P.E. of Microsoft stock is slightly higher than its justified P.E., the stock is slightly overvalued. One advantage of this approach is that it makes it clear how the firm's P-E ratio should be related to its fundamentals. We can see from the formula that, other things equal, the justified P-E ratio will increase with a higher dividend payout ratio. And, other things equal, the justified P-E ratio will increase with a higher growth rate. So, if the subject firm has a higher dividend payout ratio, lower required return and higher growth rate than its peers, a higher P-E ratio may be justified. In practice, however, other things are not equal. Remember in the last lesson, we learned that the sustainable growth rate of a company is its ROE multiplied by 1 minus the dividend payout ratio. 
This means that when a firm increases its dividend payout ratio, the growth rate of the dividends will decrease as the firm has retained less cash to fund growth. So while higher dividends will increase a firm's value, a lower growth rate will decrease the firm's value. This relationship is referred to as the dividend displacement of earnings. As such, the net effect on firm value of increasing the dividend payout ratio is ambiguous. Intuitively, it makes sense that firms cannot continually increase their market values by increasing the dividend payout ratio. Otherwise, all firms would have 100% payout ratios. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At PrepNuggets, let us do the hard work for you.